Time flows like a river, but what is flowing? In a new theory, it is the forward momentum of light that forms the forward flow of time. Because the universe is never at absolute zero, everything is radiating light waves of electromagnetic radiation continuously. If our eyes were more sensitive to the light, we would be able to see this universal process. This video will explain an artist's theory on the physics of time as a physical process. By doing this, it will give us an understanding of quantum mechanics that is based on an objective reality of our everyday life. This is done by explaining time as an emergent property with the future coming into existence light photon by light photon within an infinite number of reference frames that are continuously coming in and out of existence. Each individual observer will be in the center of their own reference frame interacting with the wave particle duality of light relative to their energy and momentum or in other words their actions. In this theory we have an observer or conscious created reality only in the sense that the observer can make the conscious choice of how to interact with the wave particle duality of light. Because light is an electromagnetic wave the electron also has wave particle duality with the flow of electric charge linked to what we see and feel as the flow of time. This is formed by one universal process of continuous energy exchange with the moment of now being formed by photon-electron couplings with a past that is gone forever and a future that is always uncertain and only exists as a probability wave that at the smallest scale is represented by Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. This can seem totally insane, but I believe that it can be explained in a totally logical, intuitive way without having to use abstract mathematics. This can be done if we think of the universe as a continuum, continuously expanding as an inverse sphere. The reason why it is an inverse sphere is because we are within the universe, looking out, being able to look back in time, in every direction, at the beauty of the stars. We have a process of continuous energy exchange that is formed by the spontaneous absorption and emission of light. This is represented in quantum mechanics by the quantum wave particle function expanding out as an inverse sphere. In this theory, this forms part of one universal process with the inverse square law of Newton's gravity. The wave particle duality of light is acting like the bits or zeros and ones of a computer, forming a blank canvas that we can interact with, turning the possible into the actual within our own reference frame. Time is an emergent property formed by a process of spherical symmetry forming and breaking that we see and feel as the future continuously coming into existence, light photon by light photon, relative to the position and the energy and momentum of the atoms. The extra dimensions of string theory and the parallel universes of U. Everett's many worlds interpretation are just future possibilities and opportunities in our one three-dimensional universe of continuous energy exchange, or what I like to call continuous creation. In the mathematics of U. Everett's many worlds interpretation, the parallel universes are all at right angles to each other. In this theory, this is because the electric and magnetic fields are always at right angles to each other, forming part of a process of continuous change that we see and feel as the continuum of time itself. The mathematics of this theory is easy to follow because it represents the geometry and the ratios of a dynamic process in three-dimensional space. I will start with this diagram representing the flow of time. In the top left hand corner we have the equation known as Heisenberg's uncertainty principle with 4 pi representing a sphere. We have 4 pi in this equation because the uncertainty principle is formed by the quantum wave particle function 
or probability function of quantum mechanics that expands out as an inverse sphere. It would be logical if time was formed by this process that represents the spontaneous absorption and emission of light that time would expand out in every direction in three-dimensional space with the expansion of the universe. But this is not what we observe. Time is two-dimensional with a past and future and a timeline forming an arrow of time that modern physics cannot explain. Almost everywhere else in this diagram we see 2 pi. The reason for this is that equations with 2 pi have cylindrical symmetry, a form of line symmetry. This line symmetry is formed because when light comes in contact with matter it forms a photon-electron coupling and we have matter-antimatter -matter annihilation in just one direction forming the arrow of time in that reference frame. In the lower right hand corner of the diagram we have the Planck constant h over 2 pi representing a constant of action in the dynamic process that forms the arrow of time. Also we see Heisenberg's uncertainty principle reformulated with energy and time with 2 pi representing the timeline instead of 4 pi representing three-dimensional space. Note also that the oscillating wave represents harmonic motion and that the equation representing the movement of the pendulum is typical of equations representing the movement of objects with 2 pi representing a universal process of spherical symmetry forming and breaking that we see and feel as the flow of time. This diagram shows a complex plane with the positive and negative numbers and the imaginary numbers going off at right angles with zero in the center. This still represents the geometry of a physical process. The zero represents zero time or t equals zero the moment of now formed by light interacting with matter with the positive numbers marching off forming a potential future with a square of probability and the negative numbers receding towards a limitless past representing the positive and negative of electromagnetic waves. In the top left hand corner we have Maxwell's second law with north and south magnetic poles cancelling out equaling zero within a sphere of uncertainty. This forms the continuous flow of electric charge with the movement of electromagnetic fields. The electric fields will always be at right angles to the magnetic fields because the momentum of light will always be at right angles to the surface of the sphere. This is represented on the diagram by the imaginary numbers being at right angles to the real numbers. In Maxwell's theory of magnetic fields any moving charged particle creates a magnetic moment. Because positive and negative charge is an innate part of matter that keeps cancelling out, this process is universal and continuous, forming a continuum of time, moment by moment. On the lower left hand side of the diagram we have Dirac's equation that also equals zero, representing zero time, with matter-antimatter annihilation forming a magnetic moment or dipole moment with the future coming into existence photon by photon, quanta by quanta. This magnetic moment is formed when light waves interact with matter to form a photon-electron coupling and the electron is the most spherical object in the universe. This spherical symmetry or organization forms a low entropy that creates a possibility for the continuous increase in entropy or disorganization that we have in the second law of thermodynamics as time unfolds. As photon energy cascades down it forms greater degrees of freedom for the increase in entropy or disorganization forming the uncertainty of everyday life. In the top right hand corner of this diagram we have Euler's identity the most beautiful equation to come out of the mind of man but this beautiful equation has no meaning or purpose in modern physics. But in this theory Euler's identity is interwoven into the dynamic fabric of our universe. 
with the plus one representing one quanter or photon equals zero time t equals zero the moment of now to understand this further we have to use the next diagram that shows how this spherical symmetry breaks forming spiral symmetry that has line symmetry for the arrow of time when the spherical symmetry is broken it forms spiral symmetry in the form of the Raman surface rising up out of the complex plane forming a spiral pattern Euler's identity is at the heart of this process the easiest way of looking at this is that the only number you could add to the number one to get zero is minus one and this forms a rotation that breaks the spherical symmetry also in mathematics the imaginary number i is the square root of minus one there is no objective understanding to this you could say that this is just the way mathematics is but in this theory the imaginary number i is the square root of minus one because it is part of a physical process linked to the square of probability there will always be uncertainty at the quantum level and in our everyday life because the imaginary number i is the square root of minus one representing the rotational symmetry that maintains the probability function at t equals zero the moment of now it may seem at times that the theory is explaining the paradoxes of mathematics rather than the mathematics explaining the theory this is because human mathematics is based on the dynamic geometry of this theory this can be seen in the way Euler's identity and imaginary numbers are part of the theory at each rotation of the origin 2 pi cylindrical symmetry has to be added and we find ourselves on another sheet of the complex plane this spiral symmetry forms line symmetry representing the timeline or arrow of time the entire spiral pattern is equivalent to a sphere 4 pi with a single minimum dynamic origin formed by spherical symmetry when the spherical symmetry is broken it forms the imperfect spiral symmetry of life that is visible in nature this is because if the quantum wave particle function or probability function is reformulated as a linear vector then all the information I can find says that each new vector is formed by adding the two previous vectors together this forms the Fibonacci sequence in this theory we have the Fibonacci numbers in nature not because of economy of growth or space but because time and space is being formed by the geometry and therefore the mathematics of this dynamic process as can be seen on the diagram we already have zero representing the moment of now time equals zero with positive one and minus one representing the positive and negative of electromagnetic waves therefore we even have the start of the Fibonacci sequence in the diagram this is linked to Euler's identity giving this beautiful equation a place in the structure of space and time to explain how the probabilistic nature of quantum mechanics can represent the potential possibilities and opportunities of everyday life we have to use the mathematics of the electromagnetic force that is based on the work of Michael Faraday because the light photon of quantum mechanics is also the carrier of the electromagnetic force this can be seen as one universal physical process in this diagram instead of having zero in the center of the diagram representing time equals zero we have Q representing charge instead of having a number line representing the future we have a test charge represented by a little Q the future is represented by potential energy in the form of voltage acting on a charge to move the charge from one point to another point the voltage is the work done to bring a test charge little Q from infinity all the way into a point that is a distance r away from the main charge q this gives us a totally objective understanding to electromagnetism 
we have to do work by putting energy into something to create the potential of our own future. Because this is a universal process, it must be the same for all electrical activity. Therefore, electrical activity in the brain can be seen as the most advanced part of this universal process. Therefore, conscious thought is always in the moment of now, with a continuous stream of thoughts and ideas that can comprehend this process as time, as an interactive process of continuous creation with a potential future infinity of possibilities. By dumbing down consciousness to the level of electrical activity that is aware of its own electrical potential, we can place the individual observer in the centre of his or her own reference frame as an active participant in the dynamics of our universe. Life will create its own ripples in the fabric of space-time as part of one universal process. This is true for the smallest creature as it is for the largest planet. Therefore Newton's universal law of gravity is part of this process. In this theory Newton's apple does not fall to the ground because of the downward force of gravity but because of the upward momentum of electromagnetic radiation or light. Gravity is not a real force at all. It is a secondary force to the electromagnetic force. Objects just free fall towards the greatest energy because it has the slowest rate of time or the greatest time dilation. I believe this can be seen in the mathematics with both the gravitational force and the electromagnetic force having the inverse square law. We have the inverse square law because the surface area of the light sphere increases with the square of the radius. Thus the strength of the gravitational field is inversely proportional to the square of the distance from the source. There is no mysterious action at a distance. The gravitational field will work at the speed of light because it is an integral part of one universal process with the electromagnetic force. We have one universal process that begins with the quantum wave particle function or probability function of quantum mechanics expanding out as an inverse sphere and ends with the inverse square law of gravity and Newton's third law of motion. To every action there is an equal and opposite reaction Gravity is the opposite reaction to the atoms radiating quantized spherical wavefronts of electromagnetic radiation. So far in this video, this theory has been explained using the mathematics that we already have. Now we are going to look at the one new equation this theory is based upon. In this diagram, the Lorentz contraction of space and time is between the energy and mass. The greater the energy, the greater the time dilation, and the slower time will run. Mass will increase relative to this, and each reference frame can be seen as a vortex in space, formed by the rate that time flows. The C2 is light radiating out in all directions, forming a sphere of probability. It is a probability wave of a potential future event, and drawing the act of measurement, the magnitude squared, or C2, gives a probability for different potential future outcomes. The brackets represent the dynamic boundary condition of the reference frame. This is formed by the surface area of the sphere that forms a two-dimensional boundary condition. The infinity symbol represents the whole universe as an infinite number of dynamic reference frames that are continuously interacting forming the uncertainty of everyday life. The universe is expanding in space and time, forming what Einstein called space-time. In this theory, this expansion can be seen not just as galaxies expanding away from each other, but also as future possibilities and opportunities relative to each individual. An observer can never get to the edge of the universe because it is creating its own space-time relative to its energy. It makes no difference what galaxy you observe from, because time and space are interlinked. The greater the time dilation, the greater the length contraction of space. 
In this way, an infinite universe fits within a finite sphere as long as the sphere is expanding continuously in space and time as an infinity of possibilities that can be represented mathematically as the square root of the continuous irrational number pi. This is because human mathematics in the beginning was based on the geometry of shapes that never change like squares, triangles and circles. But the geometry of the universe is not static like this. Therefore we have the irrational numbers like pi dropping out of our mathematics as a never-ending infinite series of numbers representing the infinite nature of our universe. This theory can explain the paradoxes of mathematical infinity. These infinities are formed because we have a process of continuous creation that we see and feel as time, that has the geometry of space-time. A mathematician will interact with this universal process just like any other object continuously forming his or her own space-time geometry. Therefore it is only logical that he or she will be able to divide that geometry into an infinite number of smaller parts as time unfolds. The universe is an interactive, dynamic, expanding continuum, and therefore we have the infinities of human mathematics. We are all active participants in the dynamics of our universe. Within such a theory, because the laws of physics are based on one universal process, the universe always seems to be fine-tuned, or in perfect balance. It can never expand into nothingness, or undergo a big crunch, collapsing in on itself, because gravity is a secondary force to the electromagnetic force. And therefore everything is connected by one universal process that forms the laws of physics. Even an individual rose will form its own future within the geometry and symmetry of this process. There are many videos on YouTube that say the universe is a hologram and that everything is just an illusion. But even a hologram needs a physical process to produce and maintain it as a three-dimensional image. If our universe is a hologram or uses the holographic principle in some way, then this process must be universal and woven into the fabric of space and time. I believe such a process would not work like a piece of holographic film interacting with a laser. The process would have the dynamic geometry of three-dimensional space-time with a built-in symmetry at every moment of time. In fact the process would look very similar to what we are seeing in this video clip. Imagine you are the frog looking out at the universe from the center of your own reference frame, and the parabolic mirrors represent the symmetry and curvature of space-time explained in Einstein's relativity. In a holographic universe, the big question is, are you real or are you just a hologram? In other words, are you the solid frog made of particles or are you the frog made of light waves? Most people would say they are the solid frog because you can feel you are made of particles and the virtual image would not exist without the solid one. But there is something not explained here and that something is time itself as a process of continuous change, continuous energy exchange or continuous creation. Therefore we can ask the question what are we over a period of time? Let's say what were we over the last 50 years, were we particles or waves? In a new theory called quantum atom theory, an artist theory on the physics of time as a physical process, we are waves over a period of time and particles only in the moment of now within our own reference frame. In this theory, the physical process that forms the flow of time is the continuous inward absorption and outward emission of light. This gives us an objective understanding to quantum mechanics with the quantum wave particle function or probability function representing the forward passage of time itself with the future unfolding photon by photon. Therefore Heisenberg's uncertainty principle 
that is formed by the probability wave function is the same uncertainty we have with any future event within our own reference frame that we can interact with turning the possible into the actual. Because the photon is also the carrier of the electromagnetic force, in this theory electrical activity in the brain is the most advanced part of this universal process with the electrical potential of consciousness always being in the moment of now within its own reference frame looking out at creation. There are many videos on YouTube that explain this theory in far greater detail therefore I am going back to explain how the holographic principle is employed in this process. Holographic film uses a laser to form an illumination beam with a beam splitter forming a secondary beam known as a reference beam that forms the interference pattern that in turn forms a virtual image. In this theory the process is formed naturally by the continuous inward absorption of light representing the illumination beam and the outer emission of light represents the reference beam that forms the interference pattern within that reference frame. The beam splitter is represented by a photon-electron coupling forming a quantum jump of energy that in this theory represents a new moment in time the moment of now within that reference frame with time unfolding photon by photon. Because the photon is also the carrier of the electromagnetic force the interactive nature of the wave-particle duality of light forms a holographic principle by encoding a description of the volume of space on the boundary of the wave function in the form of electric charge. Nothing could highlight the interactive nature of light more than a telescope. The images we see through a telescope are only relative to the lenses or eyepieces we use. But are we really seeing the universe as it is now or are we just seeing a hologram? When we look out into deep space we look back in time in all directions into the distant past at the beauty of the stars. If we look at the Andromeda galaxy we are looking back in time to a period about two million years ago. That is when the light of the Andromeda galaxy started its long journey towards the Earth. The closer we observe something the less time can elapse. Light from the stars takes years to reach us but light from the planets take only a matter of minutes and moonlight takes only seconds to reach us. Because this process is universal even the light from everyday objects must take a fraction of a second to reach us. Therefore all we ever really see is a hologram of the past formed within the eye of the individual observer. Only the moment of now is real for each individual within their own reference frame within a process that forms the ever-changing world of our everyday life. This corresponds to Einstein's relativity in which Euclidean geometry of our everyday life is only an approximation to hyperbolic geometry. Therefore hyperbolic geometry that in many ways is more beautiful than Euclidean geometry is also more fundamental in the nature of space and time. Because hyperbolic geometry has negative curvature with every point in hyperbolic space being a saddle point we are going to need a dynamic process that naturally forms negative curvature in three dimensional space. This can be formed by a very simple process of spherical symmetry forming and breaking. In these images from the International Space Station we can see a candle flame in almost zero gravity takes on the form of a sphere. Light radiates out in all directions forming a sphere that is interacting with the atmosphere on the two-dimensional surface of the sphere. The outer surface of the sphere has positive curvature but relative to the radiating light of the candle flame the inner surface has the negative curvature that is needed for hyperbolic geometry. This forms a dynamic process in three-dimensional space 
Instead of a boundary circle, we have a boundary sphere. The infinite nature of hyperbolic geometry can be represented on the negative curvature of the interior surface of the light sphere. In this way, we have the three dimensions of everyday life with Euclidean geometry within three-dimensional space formed by one dynamic process that is based on hyperbolic geometry. The spontaneous absorption and emission of light forms a process of continuous energy exchange or what I like to call continuous creation. This will be relative to the flow of electric charge with the future coming into existence light photon by light photon with each new photon-electron coupling or dipole moment. This can give us an objective understanding to hyperbolic geometry with the negative curvature of the inner surface of the sphere and the positive curvature of the outer surface representing the different aspects of positive and negative electric charge. Also in hyperbolic geometry lines are always at right angles when they come in contact with the inner surface of the sphere just as electromagnetic field lines are always at right angles to each other. In this theory, this is because they represent part of the same process with the light photon of quantum mechanics being the carrier for the electromagnetic fields. Because electric charge is an innate part of matter, this forms an interactive process with the movement of electromagnetic fields relative to the activity of the atoms. This corresponds to an artist's theory on the physics of time as a physical process. The mathematics of this theory is easy to understand because it represents the dynamic geometry of a physical process. In this diagram we see the complex plane representing the arrow of time. In this theory time is an emergent property with the future coming into existence light photon by light photon with each new photon electron coupling or dipole moment. The zero in the center of the diagram represents the moment of now for each observer or life form within their own reference frame with the uncertainty of everyday life represented mathematically by Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. Photon oscillations or vibrations are represented by transformations upon the complex plane sending each point to a corresponding point. This continuous transformation represents the continuum of time. Lines on the plane either remain lines or transform to circles, but right angles always stay true. In this theory the right angles remain the same because the mathematics represents the movement of electromagnetic fields and electromagnetic fields are always at right angles to each other. This represents the spontaneous absorption and emission of light, photon energy, with the movement of positive and negative electric charge forming the continuous changing world of our everyday life that we measure as a process over a period of time. But this diagram could never give us a complete understanding of the nature of time because it is not in three dimensions. The three dimensions of our everyday life is represented mathematically by placing the Riemann sphere above the complex plane. A light at the top shines through the spherical surface illuminating the plane. As the sphere moves, the points on the plane follow. An observer who accelerates will see the patterns of constellations as seen in the night sky near Earth continuously transform relative to his acceleration according to transformations upon the complex plane. This is because each object or observer is forming their own future relative to their own energy and momentum. Therefore each individual observer can look back in time in all directions from the center of their own reference frame at the beauty of the stars. This 
gives us an objective understanding to imaginary numbers that are found at right angles to the standard number line on the complex plane. In this theory, the imaginary numbers represent part of the geometry of a dynamic process that forms the three dimensions of space and the continuum of time or arrow of time. In this diagram we have the standard number line with positive numbers increasing in magnitude to the right and negative numbers increasing in magnitude to the left. In this theory the positive numbers represent the future and the negative numbers represent the past with the zero in the centre representing the moment of now within that reference frame. This is a process of continuous energy exchange or what I like to call continuous creation formed by the spontaneous absorption and emission of light waves. In this theory the imaginary numbers are at right angles to the standard number line because electric fields are always at right angles to magnetic fields in a process of permanent flux forming the continuously changing world of our everyday life. The light photon of quantum mechanics is the carrier of the electromagnetic force that forms a movement of positive and negative charge with the flow of electromagnetic fields. We see and feel this process of continuous change as the flow of time. In this theory time is an emergent property with the future continuously coming into existence light photon by light photon with each new photon-electron coupling or dipole moment. This is a non-linear theory of time with an arrow of time or a timeline from the past into the future for each object or individual within their own reference frame. I believe this is what we are seeing when we see an artist at work. We are seeing new light photon oscillations or vibrations continuously coming into existence relative to the actions of the artist, a continuous flow of cause and effect. We have free will because the wave-particle duality of light is acting like the bits or zeros and ones of a computer. This forms an interactive process continuously forming a blank canvas that we can interact with turning the possible into the actual. This theory explains a greater reality of one creative principle behind the laws of physics, forming something like a sounding board of a musical instrument that resonates with the vibrations of one's own thoughts, efforts and actions. Everything forms its own future space-time by slowing up the rate that time flows. This is called time dilation and is relative to our own energy and momentum. This can be seen mathematically because multiplying by the imaginary number i forms a rotation in space and time, forming the curvature of space-time. This represents a process of spherical symmetry forming and breaking. When the spherical symmetry is broken it forms spiral symmetry in the form of the Raymond surface rising up out of the complex plane, forming a spiral pattern. Each time we go around the origin, 2 pi, cylindrical symmetry has to be added and we find ourselves on another sheet of the complex plane. This process forms the three-dimensional space of our everyday life with a past we can never change and a future that is always uncertain. There will always be uncertainty at the quantum level and in our everyday life because the imaginary number i is the square root of minus one representing the rotational symmetry 2 pi that maintains the quantum wave particle function or probability function at t equals zero. The t equals zero represents the moment of now for each object or life form within our own reference frame. In this theory the physics and mathematics of quantum mechanics represents the physics of time as a physical process. The probability of quantum mechanics that is represented mathematically by Heisenberg's uncertainty principle is the same uncertainty we have with any future event within our own reference frame. We can only imagine what the future will be like but in this theory 
it will be relative to our position and the energy and momentum of our own actions. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and rate. It will help the promotion of this theory.